Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Susan McGuire, and I am Director of Professional Development at ACCE. Uh, we're really happy to have you all with us today. Um, today's webinar is the first in a three-part series on best practices for chamber sales during this difficult time. I'll just call it a challenging, challenging time. Um, and uh, our special guest today is sales coach Debbie Marizic. Um, and she is going to discuss strategies and best practices for new sales in the world of, of COVID and beyond. Um, she'll include um, content about developing your pipeline, de developing your target market, making sales calls, creating urgency, closing the deal, and developing the right mindset for success. So we're really thrilled to have Debbie here with us today to kick off our new series. Um, before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Um, all of you are currently muted to avoid background noise. Um, our system does allow both audio and chat questions. Since we have a large group today, we're going to focus on questions in the chat. So if you do have questions during the presentation or at any time, please use the chat. Um, uh, we will identify those questions and read them to Debbie um, after her presentation. Um, Debbie's prepared several handouts for today's session, and right after I am done, I will send those handouts through the chat. Um, if you prefer to wait until after the presentation, I'll also be posting them um, with the session recording on our ACCE webinar page, and that should be up by tomorrow. Um, and if we don't get to your questions, uh, Debbie can hang out a little bit after the call um, or, and or we will get in touch with you. So no worries. If you have a question, you don't get to it, um, we will um, touch base with you. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass um, the presentation over to Kathy Blank. Kathy is our chair-elect of the Membership Development Divis Division Advisory Board, and she's worked uh, for many years with Debbie, and so she is going to introduce her. So, Kathy, take it away. Welcome, everyone. So excited to kick off this series. I'm really excited about it. I want to introduce you to Debbie Marizic. She's the president of the sales company, and here's the client she coaches and consults with. Fortune 500 companies, CEOs, entrepreneurs, nonprofits, business startups, family business owners. Sounds like a lot of our members to me. Sounds like she consults with all the different uh, prospects and members of the chamber. And she helps clients through their toughest challenges. She puts together a roadmap for them to help them achieve their vision and their success. And she helps them work smarter and not harder. And I think that's a lot of what we do as a chamber as well. What Debbie loves to do is bring the fun back in sales. And we know we need a little more fun right now for sure. So I think you'll find that uh, an engaging part of her presentation. She's also an author. She wrote the book, The Field Guide to Sales. And so her field guide to sales is very much like our sales playbook that we want to put together. So I think you'll learn some tried and true things and maybe some innovative things that you haven't thought about. She's also been an award winner and a trailblazer. I've known Debbie for over 20 years. She's a mentor, trusted advisor, and a friend. Uh, she recently won uh, 2020 Dallas 500, one of the 500 most powerful business leaders in DFW. The Dallas Business Journal has provided her with the Women in Business Award, and she's also been a tech titan community hero. And the thing I love most about Deb is her inspiration. And one of her favorite sayings is, you don't have to be great to get started, but you do have to get started to be great. So I want to welcome Debbie Marizic, our speaker today. Welcome, Debbie. Oh, thank you. Hello. How is everyone? Great to be with you. Good. Okay. So Susan is putting some handouts in the chat and uh, there's three things there. One of them is just a general handout over our presentation today. So like if you want to go back and talk to your team or other people you're working with, this is kind of, you know, it'll walk you through what we're talking about today. Then there's another handout that is like a workbook for a sales forecast we're going to talk about. And then there's another just an Excel template 
for a sales forecast. So it's not filled in, but it's just there for you. So there are three documents. So uh, Kathy, thank you so much for inviting me today. And like she said, we have known her uh, for the last 20 years and we love her and lucky you, you all get to know her too. So I wish I could be with you in person today, but we'll make this the best we can be where we're all virtual. So with that in mind, um, I want to tell you first that I personally love chambers. I didn't know about them 25 years ago when I started my first business. And uh, then when I got involved in a chamber in Richardson, Texas, I'm in the Dallas, Texas area. And this was in Richardson, Texas, because I was in the technology business. Um, I just was blown away. It was like there are all these people there who wanted to help me and make it easier and make it better. And so I, I have been an advocate for Chambers ever since. In fact, I even sat on their board for 12 years. Uh, I started two different events that they are now still doing 20 years later. And uh, so you know, I just want you to know I am with you and I believe that I understand what you're up against right now. So with that, my first question for you today is where are you? You know, where are you mentally? I would like to remind you that yes, we are in COVID. This is horrendous, but we're going to get through it. So I don't know about all of you, but some of us I know on this call uh, were in when 9-11 uh, happened. So for my business, when 9-11 happened, within three days, 85% of my business was gone. Now, I want you to know, I think I'm pretty good at sales, but I am not good enough to replace my business, you know, 85% quickly. It took time, but I did it and I made it through. So I have evidence for myself that I have survived tough times before. In our community, technology is huge. We had a tech bus that sent us into a spiral like you know we thought we'd never get out of. We survived that. Uh, we live in Texas, so if anybody knows anything about Texas, the oil business, yep, everything we do in Texas is, uh, you know, affected by that. So we've been up and down and up and down with the oil business. And then who can remember 2008 when the economy just took a dive? But guess what? It's 2020. We are still here you are still here. So if this COVID has got you down and feeling like, oh, you know, I hate this, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and let's go. Because we have been here before. We will probably in our lifetime be here again with something else we don't even know or can imagine. So we're going to make the best of it. I talk about, you know, the mental, you know, those six inches between your ears, you know, what we're thinking, you know, it can be like an enemy, you know, like it's inside of us and it's getting us every day. I want you to let it go. I want you to be who you are, which is positive, ambitious, enthusiastic, excited about what you do, and let that lead you. Doesn't mean we don't have a bad day or we don't need to grab a friend for a virtual glass of wine, but you know, I want you to really be in control of your thoughts and think positive. And if you don't, call me, I'll help you because we are all in this together. So I want you to show up. I want you to be fully present. I want your head to be clear. And uh, that's both sides of your head, the right brain, the left brain. I don't care which part of your brain is your favorite. I want both of them working. I want you to show up. I want you to have a great attitude. And I want you to get with it. Because here's the thing. We're all having to do everything virtual right now. And it feels uncomfortable, but the truth is we've all been virtual for a long time. You know, think about it. We've been using the phone since when? That's virtual. I mean, some of us are old enough. We even use fax. 
taxes to conduct business back and forth. We do emails where we've conducted business back and forth. Heavens, we even have text today. We're doing business back and forth. So you have been doing business virtually, even though it's not all your business. I know you've been in person a lot, but you can handle this. So first of all, I want to remind you, uh, I teach a thing called 168 hours. What are you doing with yours? And what that is, is seven days, 24 hours a day, 168 hours. So when you think about all that you have going on, think about how much time you're really spending on what you do. Okay, and the 168 hour exercise, if you wanna be a platinum triple star student, uh, do it for a week and keep track of every minute, every day. I've had clients do this for 25 years and uh, I'm here to tell you that the one consistent thing that we have found with all clients is, and I'm gonna use the example of TV. You know, most of us think, oh, we don't watch that much TV. But when you do this exercise and you measure everything you do all week, you know, it may have only been five minutes or 10 minutes or an hour, but on average, people watch TV 35 hours a week. 35 hours a week. Yes. So what is it you're not getting done? And you don't need anybody to tell you you're not getting it done. You just need to tell yourself. So if I'm watching TV 35 hours a week, and I, if I spent two more hours on the phone focusing on new prospects, new clients, I can adjust my schedule. And also, if you take this exercise seriously and do it, do not do it with anybody else. Don't tell them you're doing it. Don't tell your significant other. Don't tell your best friend. Don't tell anybody because here's what you want to do on this exercise to really make it effective. You want to tell the truth and the whole truth. And trust me, none of us want anybody to know we're watching TV 35 hours a week. Okay? So there you go, platinum exercise for you. So let's talk about today how you are currently managing your process for sales. Do you have a sales forecast? You may call it something else, your pipeline, your funnel, whatever. What I have sent you is a generic template for this because if in fact you're somebody who is not tracking in a black and white, write it down on paper, type it on a computer type way, you need to do this. And it's not something that you do once a year. This is something you look at every day. So in the generic pipeline that I've created on this forecast for you, I always suggest to people, because this is difficult to do if you haven't done it before. So if you would start at the bottom with your customers or you, your members. So list who are your members, you know, when do they renew? Maybe your member is a member and also has some sponsorship for particular events you do. So whatever revenue you're deriving from your members, then you would list that under your customers. And then the next category is proposals. Say you have proposals out to individual people and companies. So what are those proposals? Document those on your forecast. Then the next category is hard leads. A hard lead is where maybe you have spoken to someone, they've indicated that they have interest in joining, but maybe they don't have the budget prepared yet, so they don't want you to give them, or not prepared, they don't have a budget approved yet, so they don't want you to give them a proposal yet, but you have identified them as somebody that's very interested in joining. And then the last two categories are prospects and suspects. And here is how I identify them separately. A suspect is someone that you do not know them yet and they don't know you. So for example, you got up this morning, got online, read your digital newspaper, and you read about a company that sounds like a company that is a great member of your chamber today, but you do not know this company. They do not know you. I want you to take out your forecast. I want you to put them in there under suspect. 
and I want you to quantify that suspect with the same dollar amount as your current member, okay? So you don't know them, they don't know you, but I don't want you to forget about this. And I know you're like all of us, we all have a thousand things going on. We can't remember everything. So parking it here, you may not even get to it this week to follow up and figure out more information about them, but they're there and you won't forget it. Now a suspect becomes a prospect when in fact, you two know one another. Now what I mean by that is someone has introduced you to them you maybe have exchanged an email, a text, a phone call, but you now have an awareness of each other and your existence. So that's a prospect. So suspect prospects, hard leads, proposals, and customers. There's a subtotal for each of those categories and then a grand total. So let me tell you how this works if in fact perhaps you have not done this before and I always have my clients do this because I feel like a sales forecast is like your roadmap and it's also a great time management tool. So if you looked at your forecast every single morning, started with customers and just went through the list, your members, is everybody taken care of? Is there anybody I need to do anything for? Is there anybody having a hard time? Maybe I need to call them. And then you'd look at your proposals. Is there anything else I need to do on proposals? Anything else I need to follow up? Anything I need to adjust? and hardly prospects and suspects. So every day you would be looking at this and managing your time and knowing what you have to do so you don't forget anybody. So then when I ask people to do this, so say for example, and this is one thing I want every one of you to consider, if you do not have, as we're sitting here talking today, if you do not have an exact, I mean an exact number, of the dollar amount that you want to bring in this year, or maybe you count it in the number of members, not in a dollar amount, but whatever you quantify with, I want you to have an exact number. I need 50 new members this year, or I need, you know, $500,000 more this year for the chamber. Whatever it is, I want you to have an exact number. So when I ask people to do this exercise, I do not go home with them that week and do it. They have to do it all by themselves. And so say, for example, when I first visited with them, they said to me, Debbie, I want to do an extra $200,000 this year. Well, they go, they do this exercise, and guess what happens nine out of 10 times? They call me back the next week for our meeting and go, oh my gosh, Debbie, I identified a million dollars worth of opportunities in business. Now you've told me you wanted 200,000 more and you've identified a million. So I say to them, so which do you want to do? <laughs> do you want to do the 200? Do you want to do the million? I'm good either way. Well, you know the answer. They want to do the million. But the fact of the matter is, all of you have a vault of information and things you know that you have not set down, written down, quantified, and put together like this so you can see it, so you're not acting on it. So there are things there for you to do and to take action on, but you just have so many things going on. A forecast is one of the greatest tools in the world to help you focus and look at the real numbers every day versus saying, well, we hope we do this much this year. No, no, no. Hope is not a strategy. We're talking real world strategy here. So if you don't have a forecast, I want you to really take a look. The workbook just walks you through it step by step. And if you have any questions, my contact information is there. You can reach out to me. So I want you to, and I also the deal with the forecast, I want you to always be in abundance. I want you to think abundance. I don't want you to look at that and hold back on the numbers and say, Deb, I'd really like to have 50 members, new, new members this year, but it's tough times, so I'll settle for 30. No, if we want 50, we want 50. Let's figure out how to do it. And hopefully some of the things we talk about today will help you get over that hump. So I want you to think about in the last two years, maybe even the last six months, what are new things that you had done or you had tried? 
I want you to really evaluate those and did they work? Because here's what we do sometimes. We put something new in place and it's really not working, but it's like, well, we did this and maybe you spent time and money to get it implemented, so we're gonna keep doing it. No, I want you to really look at all the activities you have in place now to generate income, to generate new members and say to yourself, is this really working or is it not? And if it's not, I want you to let it go. Now, the beauty of this being your association and you all are from everywhere and you have different chambers, different sizes, is that you, we're gonna talk about today collaborating. So this is a great resource you have to talk with one another. So for example, if you had something you tried and it didn't work, this group is a group of people you could put out there and say, we tried this and it didn't work. And it may be that it just needs to be tweaked a little, just a little something that you overlooked and they could help you, or it really may need to get thrown out. You know, not the baby in the bathwater, but this may truly need to be thrown out. So really look at what you're doing and then look at where you did prospecting in the past. You know, where you did it in the past may not be where, it, what, where it's going to be in the future. So for example, um, today, I, I, you know, if you were in person, I, I would make you raise your hands and tell me, please tell me, all of you are on LinkedIn. Well, I can tell you 10 years ago, even though LinkedIn was around, people really were not utilizing it for prospecting. This is a powerful tool. And this is my opinion on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the only thing out there that I cannot go and put your name in. I cannot put anybody's name in. So all the people, all of them, the millions of them that are on LinkedIn, they had to sign themselves up, period. They did it. LinkedIn, the game is connecting, is linking in. They knew that when they signed up. So therefore, they're on there. I assume they're there to play the game. And so they are prospects. They are prospects just like you are a prospect for them, okay? So reaching out, sending messages, this is all part of it and it's, it's totally legitimate, legal, whatever you wanna call it, but we need to utilize LinkedIn a lot more than we do, okay? And I know there is somebody out there right now thinking, but Deb, I've sent messages and they didn't respond to me. Well, shame on them for not playing the game. So you just move on to the next person. We're not gonna judge the millions of people on LinkedIn by a few bozos who don't play the game right. So you keep doing it. So LinkedIn is a very powerful prospecting tool, as well as other social media. And I would imagine each of your chambers, you probably have a Facebook page, LinkedIn, Twitter, maybe you even have an Instagram page now. So there's people, real people on all of those, real companies on all of those, small, medium, and large. I had somebody tell me once, Debbie, I'm not doing Twitter because you know my corporations aren't on there. I said, really? I said, Coca-Cola is one of my favorite corporations in the world. Hold on, let me see. What well, Coca-Cola is on Twitter? Come on, the Fortune 50 is on Twitter. Everybody's there. So don't judge anybody and say, oh, they wouldn't be on there. If they're on there, you need to be on there if that's who you want to do business with. And I also really want to mention, you know, we're talking about new members and going forward in the future and all. But one of the covenants in sales is about the people who are already with you, your, your members that are already with you, whether they've been with you a year or 25 years, that is a bird in the hand. You do not want to let them go. You need to have a plan for paying attention to them. And even more so right now, because everything's virtual, we know they're not gonna be at the monthly luncheon or the monthly event or breakfast this month. So you want to be attentive to them. You do not want to lose any members. You want to keep them all. 
So you need to be reaching out to them, not just to the people that you're wanting to prospect and do new business with. Okay, so I want each of you to think about what it is that you do best. You know, are you really analytical? Are you really creative? What is it that you are? So me, I am very uh, outgoing. You know, I am comfortable talking to people. I know you're not experiencing me this way today, but my natural tendency, believe it or not, is as an introvert. And my whole life through childhood and college, you know, I just really didn't talk to people. But one thing I learned, and I didn't know I was learning, was that if I ask other people questions, they would talk and I didn't have to. Let me tell you, by the time I got into sales, this is one of the greatest things is being able to listen. So I am a great listener. I ask great questions. I ask open-ended questions, who, what, where, why, when, and how, not yes, no questions. So then when they say no, then nobody knows where to go with the conversation. So think about what do you do best? And here's the deal. We cannot be best at everything. We just never are. So we need to focus on what we do best, but we need to engage other people that do other things well and figure out how to work together. So you might be feeling like also that you're not doing it quite right. Oh my gosh, we need to take that out of our vocabulary. You know, like we should be doing this. We should, don't say that. The deal is, Nothing is ever perfect. So if you are one of those people that have those perfection tendencies, and we won't name any names of people on here we might know, so like me, we're not gonna name me, but if you're a perfectionist, let it go. Think about what you do best and let's work on that. So let's talk about collaboration. Collaboration, whether it's your regular life or your work, is so important because we can't all do everything the same. So great benefits of collaboration is simply other people being able to learn from them. You don't need to go get a four year degree in finance when you have somebody who's brilliant at that and can explain the numbers to you. They may need you to explain how to talk to other people. You're great collaborators. It saves you time. You can't know it all, but somebody else who already knows it can answer the question that quick because they do it every day, great. It creates disruption. So when you have different people, different ideas, then different solutions are gonna come up that might be more effective than what you're doing today. So who do you know? Who do you know? What do they know? It's like thinking about taking an inventory. So, key qualities of collaboration. And you can say these are key to networking. To be caring. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes, you want members, but if the person you're talking to thinks you just want a number, you know, a check mark in the column, but you don't really care about their business or them or, you know, their growth or their problems right now and all, you know, they may not say that they don't want to do business with you, but in their mind, they're thinking it. So you want to be caring. You want to be curious. You know, what are they doing? How do they do it? Why do they do it? That kind of thing. So you'll know how to tell them what you're doing with the chamber can affect their business and them and make things better. You want to be appreciative, like we were talking about your current clients, you know, your current members. You want to be appreciative of them, not just when it's time for sign up, but all year long. You want to be appreciative of everybody. You really want to be great at listening. Like we were saying, you know, if you're not great at asking questions, just write down who, what, where, why, when, and how, and then ask questions like that so other people will talk to you and give you more information. You want to trust. You want them to know that they can trust you, that you are a revered citizen, a revered organization in your community. You know, like Kathy is in McKinney. McKinney Kenny loves 
the McKinney Chamber. They love Kathy. This is an important part of their community. People feel like they can trust them. It's critical. So make sure you're trusting and be a relationship builder. You do not have to be a huge extrovert to be a relationship builder. When you care about people, you can carry on conversations and all, you can build relationships in a way that's comfortable for you. You want to be very diplomatic. You know, sometimes there are difficult things going on. Difficult decisions have to be made. They want to do this and you can't do it. You've got to learn to be a diplomat. And then you have to be creative. So be creative. What are new ways to do this? I don't know how many people we have on today. Let's see. We have 51 people on here today. So with 51 people, I bet we could come up with some great ideas together. So you can't force collaboration, you know, you earn it, you know, it's like networking, <coughs> referrals, you need to work at it. So I've listed a few things here for you because communication in 2020, not that communication hasn't always been so important in what you do, but even more critical now. So it's not just your active listening, you know, before active listening, when you were with people in person, of course, critical, they knew when you weren't paying attention to them that you didn't give them eye contact. But even more critical now, when you have them on the phone and you're listening, you may usually be quiet and just listen, but you might find that you need to go, yes, mm-hmm let them know that you're there and that you're really paying attention. So Deb, can I interrupt and ask a few questions? Because of, uh, course. of kind course. of what some of what you're talking about, the traditional <coughs> sales tools, like, you know, we're not able to be in person with a lot of our prospects. So can you talk about innovative ways we can use the tried and true sales tools and adapt them when we're trying to close the sale, when we're trying to get in front of somebody, oh, of meeting, things like that. Of course. So you can't be with them in person, but you can be in communication with them. You know, so emailing them, texting them, this is why communication is so important. You know, you don't want to just send an email and go, hey, how are you? You know, how many emails do you get in a day? You know, you want to really be engaged with them. So do some research before you call if they're new to you if they're a prospect look them up online you know everybody's on there now find out what you can about them and so then if you have to leave a voicemail or you're sending an email make it personalized to them what do you know about them what do you have with the chamber that you feel like you could help them be better now here's the deal so we normally see people in person and one of the things that i've learned doing this i didn't realize how many people I talk to during an event. You're like, just when you walk in, I may be intentional today about going to this event because I want to talk to Joe. I'm going to make sure I meet him while I'm there. But you talk to all these other people. Well, we don't have that right now. So to do phone calls, to be intentional, make yourself do phone calls, leave compelling voicemails. This is critical. The other thing you need to remember right now is other people are not seeing people in person either. So more people than normal are willing to get on a Zoom call. So I've done things like somebody I really wanna meet with or I wanna know that I might've normally met at my chamber luncheon, I send like a $5 Starbucks gift card and say, hey, can we have a cup of coffee? This is what I'd like to talk to you about. I understand this is what you do. And so, you know, I mean, they send a note back just to say thank you for the card oftentimes. So, you know, just reaching out. I've even done things where it's maybe a few people, a few people and said, you know, hey, I know you, you and you. I would like you to know one another. Could we do a Zoom over lunch? You know, bring your sandwich and, you know, we'll all have lunch together. Together. So there are things we can do virtually that six months ago, if you called somebody and said, hey, let's have lunch on Zoom, they would have thought you were nuts. But today, not so much. So think about, you know, how you're communicating your verbal skills, your nonverbal skills, because that's the other thing, you know, like you are only seeing me from the shoulder up. If you were with me in person, 
you would know what Kathy knows about me, which is I am extremely animated. And even if I was meeting you for the first time, I probably would hug you and tell you how happy I am to meet you, but you can't see any of that. So, you know, how we appear to somebody from the shoulder up may not be how they would perceive us if they were meeting us as a whole person standing in front of them. So, you know, you want to be who you are, but you may, like I said, if you're more quiet or something, you may have to talk more, you may have to acknowledge more, like when you're talking to them. And uh, even on Zoom, you know, you want to watch your eye contact, you know, make sure you're looking at them. You're not checking your emails and your phone and, you know, doing other things. You know, how rude is that? You would never do that to somebody in person. Don't do it virtually. And, uh, you know, earlier I talked about, you know, however you were prospecting in the past, like prospecting now, you know, it's still, even though it's virtual, it's one-to-one, -one. it's people, you know? So some people do prefer just dealing with emails. Some people are happy to do it, you know, on the phone or on a Zoom or something, but you also need to understand how people want to be communicated with. And then Kathy, you ask about closing. So here's the thing with closing. So when we're meeting people now and the way in which we're getting to know them is virtual, whether it's on the phone, email, Zoom, that kind of thing. Hopefully by the time you get to the place where you're presenting your membership and the opportunity and all of that, what you have here is not about closing, getting the order. Uh, maybe some of you all remember the movie with uh, Alec Baldwin, Glenn Gary, Glenn Rose, and that was like the ABCs of sales is to always be closing. That is not the ABC of sales. The ABC of sales is to always be caring. Remember, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. So when you're communicating with people, you're having a conversation, okay? I'm gonna tell you a quick story on myself that's embarrassing, but true. Uh, I live in the Dallas area, so the Dallas Morning News is our newspaper. Cheryl Hall is our brilliant business section news editor, and you would kill to get an interview with her and for her to write about you in the Dallas Morning News, your hometown newspaper that goes to 3 million people, okay? My PR guy gets me an interview with her and we're talking and I think it's going well. She has her little recorder on. So, you know, she doesn't miss a thing, but <clears throat> excuse me, we're talking about closing and we're talking about, you know, talking to one another. And, um, and so I said, you know, well, um, you know, if you're talking more, you know, if you're the salesperson, you're talking more than 60% of the time, then you're not getting any new information. You know, and I'd already said, you know, like you need to ask questions. You need to be getting them to talk to you, telling you what's going on and all. Well, my PR went to this meeting, PR guy went to the meeting with me because he's personal friends with her. So he's sitting over there during the meeting, just having a cup of coffee. So I'm thinking I have answered that question. Like if you're talking more than 60% of the time, you know, you're not getting more information. My PR guy goes, that is not what you say. And I'm like horrified. And I'm like, yes, that is what I say. And he said, no, that's not what you say. Well, here was the truth. Cheryl just stopped and went, well, we're not gonna move on until you tell me what you really say. And so what I really say, if I was with you in person, if you're talking more than 60% of the time, shut up. You're not learning anything new. So stop it. So ask questions, but think about this. So what are the questions though that you need to ask the first time you talk to somebody? What are the questions? This is why people don't like salespeople is because they're not prepared. But if you know the questions you need to ask the first time you talk to somebody to begin to understand if they might be a great candidate for your chamber, then you, you, you're not gonna know. So you need to know what those questions are, but here's the deal. So then for your next appointment, your next call, what are the questions then? So that when it comes time for them to say, yes, they would like to be a member. Yes, 
they would like to sponsor an event. Yes, they would like to sponsor the whole chamber. What you have had then is a conversation that's gone back and forth and back and forth. And so when it comes to closing, it's like, great, let's get started. Do you want to start this month or next month? It's not a hard sell. It's a conversation. And here's the deal about building relationships and keeping those members for life. You want that to be a conversation that never ends. I have people I do business with today that I have known more than 30 years because this conversation never ended. No, we do not do business every year together, every month together, but we know one another and we know things and it's a conversation. It's not a sell. It's not about just getting you to join today and then I don't ever talk to you again. It's relationship building. So one of the most important things in sales always and where many people forget is about asking for the order. When I was young, I didn't get this, you know, I really didn't. So when you're having this conversation back and forward, it comes to a natural place like, let's get started. Yes, what do I need to sign? Where do I need, where do I send the check? So closing is a conversation, sales is a conversation, and it's based off of caring. Thank okay. you, Deb. And, and so I, I wanna, uh, Deb, open it up to some conversation that's been in the chat. I know yes, Jordan, please. if Jordan's still on, but uh, Jordan was sharing a lot about prospecting through LinkedIn. Are you mm -hmm. still Jordan? How many people here, has anybody used LinkedIn for prospecting? I know DeAndre, you've used Facebook and Facebook Messenger to get in front of folks. So uh, what kind of tools are you guys using in our virtual world when you can't always go in person to get in front of somebody? You know, this is the one hard thing about Zoom when people are just a little square, you don't get to see the people or the reaction or anything. So I hope yeah. this is resonating with everyone. I, I mean, I, I use definitely Facebook as a lot of the smaller companies these days, um, you know, that's their starting place. So yeah. I, that's my excuse for being on Facebook all day to my husband. Um, <laughs> and, you know, just, this, just this morning, I had a friend request and, you know, normally I don't think too much of it. I see if it, they're part of my network, but I did do some research and dig a little deeper. And he was a new, well, he wasn't a new music studio. He's actually been in, in the business uh, for some time in our city, reached out to him, um, had, was able to get him on the phone right away and, and we signed him up on the spot. So, and again, it was a lot of dialogue, it was a lot of conversation, I asked some personal questions about music lessons, how much it costs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I also depend a lot on our local newspaper because they report a lot on some newer businesses that I'm not aware of, uh, especially I'm not out and about, you know, prospecting in, like physically as much. So those are all great ways for me to uh, find leads. Anybody spend social media for some of that? Um, I, I do actually, uh, Debbie, I, I'm fairly active on social media. I find LinkedIn to be particularly effective. When mm -hmm. somebody reaches out to me as a um, contact, I respond back, thank you so much for connecting. I'd like to invite you to a chamber event as my guest. Oh, and then I, fabulous. Then I invite them to an event we call a business builder, which is basically an overview of everything we do. And so, you know, come as my guest, let me know if you can, I'll add you to the list and it works really well for me. And Kelly, might I ask, you know, are you having any virtual events with your chamber right now? So like you could invite them virtually as well? Yes, we have moved every single event, every committee, <laughs> every single thing that we did before and more. <laughs> we are now doing virtually. Yeah. Ironically, um, I have had virtual events on my wish list for about five years, specifically a business expo. I've wanted to do a business expo virtually for a really long time. But, you know, we always have this big giant list of things to do. And that was always at the bottom. <laughs> and oh. now, of course, boom, it's up at the top. And we have become Zoom experts. We have an event coming up next Friday. We have over 400 f signed up. We did our business awards. We had about 600. So, yeah, everything is, wow. I mean, it's not, it's not been easy. It's been a lot of work, but um, we've moved Well, everything. Kelly, I wish I knew you because this is exactly what I'm talking about. So here's <laughs> Kelly, who's part of your team. She was thinking about this five years ago. 
And I'm very certain she didn't think, oh boy, let's have a pandemic and make them all have to stay home and we'll invite them. I get that, Kelly. Kelly was working to the good. But the truth is, what are those ideas that you have that five years ago, yeah, I'm seeing Kelly shake her head. You know, her team maybe was thinking she was a little out there, but the fact of the matter was she was on it. She was on it. And so it's those kind of things, talking about it, just trying it. And Kelly, I love that idea of inviting them to a virtual event, just as you would an in-person event. And I understand, my heart is with you. So Kelly, quick thing, in my Richardson Chamber, there was a gala event. We started 20 years ago when the technology business bust. You know, you never want to sit next to me in a chamber board meeting and you're fussing. That is just not my way. And I happened to be sitting next to my friend who was one of the key sponsors for the chamber from Deloitte. And he leaned over to me and you should never have let us sit together anyway. But he said to me, Debbie, they're making me nuts. And I said, well, they're making me really nuts because I get that that's bad, but the whole, you know, everybody is not going to hell in a handbasket right now. And he said, you know what? I think I have $25,000 left in my budget this year. How about I give it to you? I said, well, then let's have a party. And these are technology people, Kelly, who never wear a tuxedo or dress up in a pretty dress and come out. Guess what? They came out, it was in a bust, and this year is our 20th anniversary, and guess what? 20th anniversary, you can only imagine the soiree that was planned, it's virtual. Yep. Virtual. Deb, thank you. We've yeah. got a great question. Uh, we have a lot of our sales folks that are now asked to do more things, whether it's host virtual meetings, whether it's do retention, not just sales. So what are some things that can be automated and streamlined through the sales process and what things can't, what are some creative ways? And uh, Debbie, you can answer this and maybe some of our participants can answer how they're leveraging ambassadors or other groups as well. So, uh, you know, so, we're much thin now. So when we talked about understanding what you're doing with your time and, you know, now you're asked to do these other things. And so this becomes even more critical is that when you're trying to fit these other things in, something has to go if you're doing something in. So to Kathy's point, using tools, using others. So for example, each and every one of you right now have people who are members. They're happy members. They may be having a tough time, but they're happy members. And so you need to be leveraging the relationships you've had with them all these years and asking them about who they're doing business with, who might make sense for the chamber. You need to be proactive in that. I'm not talking about an email newsletter blast, and that's fine. That is also a great tool to communicate with many people at one time. But you need to, so for example, you talked about like a group of ambassadors. You know, those ambassadors, tell them specifically what you want, you know, divide them up into industry sectors. Let's go after five new realtors this week. Let's go after five new bankers. Let's go after five new consulting companies. Let's go, you know, and make goals, make it fun, make it a competition, but utilize your, you know, whether it's social media, you know, whatever it is, your email, your phone, and reach out to those people. You know, people, here's the deal. You know, when I talked about closing and asking for the order, you know what, when we need things, we don't think about it, you know, and you need something right now and your members would gladly help you, but they're not at their office thinking about, you know, I should call my chamber today and see if they need anything. They don't do that. But when you reach out to them and say, hey, we're looking for one more company in your industry sector, who might you recommend? And they, you know, and they tell you. So engage them in your success as you want to be engaged in theirs. Great. And Deb, I've got Zach Snyder. He's uh, uh, got some great in insight into the, exactly what you're talking about. So Zach, will you please share? And you're muted. <laughs> there, you go. there you are. Hi, Zach. Hey, uh, sorry, I was going to start my, uh, my camera here too. So can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. 
All right, we're, we're putting it on a screen here as well to share. So that's why I wasn't sure. Um, so yeah, we uh, had a really big effort to automate a lot of our retention um, for new members as well as um, current members. And so we have an email automation that has uh, about every other month, um, it's kind of more heavy on the first few months for new members. So did you do this yet? You know, sign up for your Office Depot discount. Did you check out all of the benefits or whatever it might be? Um, month two, hey, have you attended any events yet? Here's what's coming up. Um, and then kind of so on and so forth. Have you connected with your ambassador yet? They probably reached out by now. So please make sure that you connect with them. Um, obviously it's looking a little bit different, uh, but the messaging is still the same. So they get put in a one year uh, automation. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, and in doing that, you're creating a sense of urgency, like do it now, like you were talking about, maybe they haven't taken advantage of a discount and stuff. You know, it's like, that's part of the value of what you bring. And so you're reminding it, reminding them and getting them to actually do it. Yeah, it's like a one year onboarding that takes a lot of um, things away off our plate so we can focus on the acquisition piece. Um, and it's been really successful to, you know, I hate to say it this way, but make it look like you're uh, doing more than you are physically, uh, but it's something that is very easy to automate. Um, so why wouldn't you? But, but here's the deal. That brings up just a brilliant point, Zach. Many people have not belonged to a chamber before. They may have heard of a chamber, so they don't know what to expect from them. So, you know, you really do need to be intentional about telling them all those little things that are part of the chamber. And not only telling them once, but reminding them. You know, these are things you can count on for the chamber. It is perfectly okay for you to utilize the membership directory and call other members directly and say you're a member. It's okay for you to use this discount. You can use it more than once. I do not think you can over communicate with your members or your prospects. And Deb, I've got a follow-up. On the, oh, sorry, go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, Zach, and a follow-up for you and then a follow-up for Deb. So there's questions about what system you use. And like, I think, you know, with any system, you can even track and see who's opened it. So that's the first question. And then the second question in the beginning, we talked about mindset for us as salespeople. But Deb, what you're saying, it's changing the mindset for our customers so they understand the value. So Zach, will you first talk about the system you use yeah. and how you track it? So one thing that we do as well, just to kind of uh, piggyback from what I said before, but we'll get also multiple people on that mailing list. So it's not just the main contact or the business owner, because what we've really realized on the engagement piece is that we need to engage more than just that, that one champion if you will, um, because, you know, certain people are going to see value in the government affairs or, you know, if your chamber does economic development or the talent development or whatever, so that when time comes in one year to renew that membership, there's multiple people around the office saying that, oh, I love going to that event. And inside, otherwise, if you just have one person who's like, I just like the networking, then they leave, you have to resell the membership over again. So kind Absolutely. of in that same thing that uh, onboarding is really onboarding them as a company, not just that person. So uh, so we'll sign up multiple people, uh, most likely key individuals that will actually use the membership, um, even though everyone is a member. Again, those key individuals who actually do stuff with us. So, um, and then we do that on the engagement side too for current members. Um, the program that we, uh, we went back and forth because uh, MailChimp was not doing it. Uh, so we switched <laughs> to active campaign which was an extra fee. And then MailChimp had an update and it was cheaper and we were kind of still using it for some stuff. So it all, long story short, back to uh, MailChimp. Um, so it kind of depends too, I don't know. We use Atlas uh, as far as uh, for membership or for Chamber, everything really. Um, so I know some people probably use Chamber Master. I don't know if those things have that capability, but what we do really like about um, uh, Survey Monkey is you can literally drag and drop in these templates now, which is what we really wanted. Um, and it also lets you add like an if this, then this kind of action. So if they haven't opened up this email, it may send another one, um, you know, and, and you kind of create these rules. Um, and so we're going to also be investigating that for prospecting too. So we had a meeting, it's automatically going to send, put them in a queue that if they don't respond back to your follow-up email, 
I'm going to automatically say, hey, just so, you know, as a reminder, we talked about this, you know, so that we don't have to literally just keep emailing people to follow up um, as much as we do. So. Uh, and Zach, one of the things you bring up a great point where you have a company and you have multiple contacts, this is where it's critical for each and every one of you to really understand the value you bring for your chamber, because the value is not the same to everyone. You know, Zach makes a great point, you know, like for my chamber, I'm not interested in being part of the local government and there's aspects of that that they have, you know, I'm interested in a particular industry sector. So that's what's a value to me, you know, and so understanding clearly all the value attributes that you have for different people in different combinations. This is critical. And I think we have a great example that just happened in our chamber today. We got chocolates from one of our members, it's a roofing company. And I looked at their uh, profile, they've come to one event and we really haven't seen them actively. We have a lot of hailstorms in McKinney, so we have a lot of roofers. But what happened was when COVID hit and we developed our McKinney Back to Business page and we put all the resources, including the PPP and the loans and all that stuff, they called us and we just kept directing them. We didn't know the answer to their questions, we just directed them and they took the time to appreciate us. And it's just that info sharing that helped them get a, I'm sure they got a grant. I, I haven't heard back from her yet, but what my point is, that is worth the membership right there. And if we're not really helping our clients and our members and our prospective members see the big value of what we're doing, uh, you know, we're really undercutting what we offer. Now we're getting to one o'clock, we're getting pretty close. A couple things I wanna sum up with and we'll, uh, Debbie's willing to stay on for a couple more questions. Uh, we're gonna have a follow-up session and we're gonna have some uh, chamber, uh, exec chamber professionals that are gonna talk more about you know, the nuts and bolts of what they found during this time. It's gonna be part of the virtual summit. Uh, we're gonna record this session and have it available. Uh, but, you know, if you have any ideas of things you've used, please share with us. And uh, there's two people I'd like to call on. I'd like to call on Megan Kelly uh, from Wenner from the uh, Dallas Regional Chamber to just share, share some of the technology tools she's used and then Britt after that. And then we'll uh, pass it back to Susan to kind of close and then we'll have some more time for Deb, Debbie if, if we have time. So are you still here, Megan? I am. How are you? Great. Hi. Uh, so I'll just share real quickly because we'll get into it a little bit uh, deeper in the next session, but there's two tools that we've really found helpful. Um, one, I know that Debbie really mentioned LinkedIn and couldn't agree more with everything you said. Uh, we use LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Uh, there is a price to that every year, but we have one account for our team and have organized it into prospects. Uh, and so that way we're able to track when executives are moving, especially right now because everything is so fluid. Uh, the other thing that it's helpful for are your current members. You can add a list of your main contacts in there. So when your main contact leaves, LinkedIn will actually notify you. So now that's a flag of, hey, I've got to get a new main contact at this company. And also maybe where they went is not a member yet. And that's a prospect. Uh, and then the other thing we use is a digital sales presentation tool. We were using it before COVID and I am so glad we worked out the kinks uh, because now it's just been really helpful. It's called uh, Digideck. Uh, it's something a lot of the sports teams and convention centers use uh, to be able to present a dynamic presentation uh, for multiple people on the team. So we'll talk more about those next week as they come up, but if anyone has any other questions in the meantime, I'm always happy to help. And then put that second tool in the chat, uh, Megan. That would be helpful. And uh, before we close, uh, Britt, do you want to share anything? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Kathy. Um, everybody, uh, kind of similar to what Zach was talking about, we've um, automated our new member journey. Um, we were originally doing it through MailChimp and have recently switched over our journey to um, be in the same system that we use, which is Growth Zone, which is really nice because then you can track your contact from the minute they're a prospect all the way through their first year. So it's all in one spot, which has been really helpful. Um, but yeah, similar to Zach, it's touching on key points, things to get them engaged. 
Um, we have a series of emails. Some come from our president, some come from me. Um, so it kind of spreads out uh, throughout the team um, who they're getting those emails from so they can get to know all of us. So it's been working really well so far. How big is your chamber? That's somebody's asking, uh, uh, Re Re Ritza is asking. Yep, um, we have just over 1,200 members. Great, cool. Well, I think time is about up. Uh, like I said, Debbie's welcome to, uh, willing to stay on a little bit for some follow-up questions, but uh, Susan, I'm gonna pass the torch over to you. Okay, well, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Debbie, uh, Zach, Britt, uh, Megan, everyone who contributed, really appreciate uh, the uh, great information and uh, sharing today. So really appreciate it. Um, just as a reminder, uh, our webinar is recorded. It will be on our webinar page and I'll put it on the Membership Development Division page. Should be there tomorrow and I'll post the handouts as well. I will also post the public chat if you want to download it in the meantime because I know folks have put contact information and lots of good stuff in there. Um, go ahead and click on those three little dots at the lower right hand corner and download the chat. Um, and let me check. I think that's all. Um, so I appreciate it. We'll hang on just a few minutes in case anyone else has any follow up for Debbie. But otherwise, um, thank you all for being here. And I really look forward to the follow up session at the summit. It's going to be awesome. If you haven't registered for the summit, um, I hope you do so and get with me if you have any questions that can help you with that. Okay. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate your presentation.